to me, those are always the best concerts because you know what bottom is. How are you going to go to other concerts that are lucky and blessed, not just privileged, but blessed. I mean, they can work, do a lot of good work too, but you don't understand their mind like mm -hmm. someone else, right? When black and brown folks sit in front of me, I understand all the cultural things. They don't have to explain mm -hmm. it to me. When you talk to someone that's been through trauma, hardship, abuse, physical, mental, sexual, emotional, right? You already know where their mind's at because you've been there. Yeah. There's validity into that. Uh, so I yeah. wanted to uh, appreciate you for that and also help everyone else on the podcast as listening. That's also has a trauma history. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're worthless. Yep. Doesn't mean that you're broken. Uh, human. You're human. human. And I, I misspoke because I think everyone's broken, but there's beauty in the broken bits. I don't think there's such thing as perfection. Yeah. All right. Can I add one thing there? Cause I, I think this, this also is a conversation that, you know, I've been, I, it's starting to circulate right on social media, but also just within like a couple like trauma informed spaces that, that I'm a part of. And I think to, to go off what you're saying, which is like, also if we're actually all invested in the goal of helping people heal and be in connection and community with one another, why is healing only reserved for a like a licensed professional or like a doctor or a right mm -hmm. and I, that's not me saying that like i don't value the degree that i have or the doctor yeah. that you got right <laughs> and what i'm also saying is again if we want to break down right the accessibility to care and connection and healing we have to almost think from different lenses at times right mm -hmm. like people can heal and we have to have people heal without going to therapy, you know? So like, and, and I take that as like, so who am I to say that I'm better than anybody else because I'm a therapist? I'm not, right? Like, trust me, I know firsthand, I live in my head all day long, right? Like I'm not. Um, so I, I think that's another piece of this as well. And like, yeah, yeah for, I think all the therapists out there, like, <laughs> you don't get a gold star for not being broken. Right? Like you, you just don't. don't. That's, in fact, that's I think you get a gold star for being broken and bouncing back. Yeah. 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 Well, Brilliant, right? I'm going to kick so. it back over to, uh, over to Spence. I just wanted to pivot, take her down the path because she was vulnerable. Yeah, no, yeah, I thanks. appreciate that. And I also have to agree. I think there are plenty of people in our lives that aren't therapists that help us on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so yeah, I just want to put that out there too. Um, so, you, you are the director and you're also on the medical advisory council for Morgan's message, right? Uh, could you explain to us what is Morgan's message and what, what's your role in there? What do you, what do you do? Yeah. Morgan's message is a fantastic. It's, I mean, oh my God, uh, since starting in 2020, I believe it's, it's exploded, but it's a nonprofit um, started by the friends and family of Morgan Rogers, who died by suicide in 2019. Um, she was a women's lacrosse player at Duke and um, about this. Or, yeah, um, it's an, it's an incredible, I'm so honored to be a part of this organization. And I got involved with them um, shortly after, uh, I think it was the fall of 2019 because at the time I was living in Durham, I was doing a lot of work and consulting at Duke. And one of the teams I was working with was Duke women's lacrosse. So, um, I really, from, from the start got involved with them and was doing speaking engagements and workshops and all this stuff. Um, and then last year about this time took on their, like the director of their medical advisory council. Um, so what that, and, and within Morgan's message, right, it's a nonprofit that really, um, aims to create awareness and break down stigma around mental health, specifically in the sport community. Um, they have two main emission, main initiatives. They have a, an awesome podcast, um, the mental matchup, which you guys should definitely check out. Um, yeah. and then they have an education program, which is basically like a peer to peer facilitated, um, awareness and education program. And so, my role is really kind of large scale oversight around, okay, so yeah, how do, one of my passions is like trauma informed space, um, trauma informed group spaces in particular, because when we're getting together and we're in community and connection and we're talking about mental health, tough stuff is going to come up. Mm. And we, in order to help people feel like they belong and they are included and they can access safety within that environment and have those talks, um, there's 
stuff we need to make sure, right? There's boundaries, there's expectations, there's group norms. So I oversee that. I also oversee and work with our education program director to actually like create the education and the content that's going out to them. So it's an amazing, and then I, I'll do some speaking stuff as well, but it's an amazing organization for anyone that's listening. I highly encourage that you guys check it out. And the other cool thing is that we just started what, we, what we're calling our at-large program, which is for people in the community. So you guys could be like at-large ambassadors, people, you don't have to be an athlete to be involved in the organization. So it's really cool. We're doing amazing work. Um, and that's very, um, you know, my role is, is, I guess it's part-time, but it's, we're, yeah. we're constantly rolling with that. So it's, oh, yeah. it's a lot of work, but it's, it's amazing. So I'm going to pivot, but on topic. So you do a lot of stuff. And so, you know, yeah. and there's this other thing I read on the page, right? And you're stretching and, 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 and they call it yoga, <laughs> but it looked like witchcraft. You know, <laughs> it looked like Satan's work. Look like the devil if I ever see you know, it. Like like Bobby Boucher's mom said, you know, they're the devil. Yoga is the devil. That, Bobby, <laughs> that's the devil. So yeah. what is this yoga stuff and why okay. is it healing? Is it good for folks? Mm -hmm. Why do awesome. people, why is yoga so recommended? It was one of the best practices for anxiety and mental health. Okay. So I love this witchcraft. Yeah. Um, and to go dumb. back to your first comment, which is like, you do a lot of things. Yes. I constantly feel like a chicken with my head chopped off running around, but um, I love it. It keeps me, it keeps I love me chicken. honest. I love chicken. Um, yeah. I mean, Hey, so, okay. I, I love movement based practices. Okay. And I think this really gets into my background in mindfulness and mindfulness intervention. And to be fair, we know, especially in working with trauma, like, <laughs> Somatic based interventions are yep. actually really, they should be the standard, right? Because mm -hmm. we know that really difficult experiences, whether you're going to label them as trauma or not, right? However, you're making meaning of them, they, they get stored in the body. I mean, it's a nervous system thing. It's not a cognitive thing. So Movement-based practices, I, I just really resonate with. They've been a massive part of my own healing. And so, yeah, I did my um, just basic kind of like 200-hour yoga certification. But what I love about yoga, and I don't actually call it yoga. I call it integration. They're integration sessions. So I'll give you I'll give you an example, right? Of, Wait a minute. You're you putting us in a matrix now. Integration. You know, integration. <laughs> Separate but equal. Separate but equal. <laughs> we'll we'll integrate. It's a separatist state, you know. Let me give you this hat right here. Oh my god. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're fine. Um. So, how I might use this in a sports setting, or how I do use yes. this, is if I'm going to go into a team, and we're going to talk about mindfulness, right? Yep. Mindfulness is a. It's quite a buzzword right now, but really, it just means you know we are paying attention, we're doing it on purpose, and we're doing it in kind of this very balanced way, right? It's a great tool, way of being, skill for an athlete because it allows us to just like really be where our two feet are. But what we often don't recognize is like that's not just a mental skill. That's not a thinking thing, right? As we talked about earlier, the the mind and the body don't operate separately. So we really actually need to get people getting in their bodies. Right. Yeah. And I just find that movement can be really helpful. Athletes tend to really resonate with movement-based practices. So simple stuff like helping an athlete really understand how maybe their mental narratives are impacting their physical body. Right. So I work a lot in lacrosse and in lacrosse, like your grip is a big part of how you handle your stick, right? And how you throw and how you shoot. And so if an athlete is dealing with some really tricky kind of what I call sticky narratives, right? That are kind of getting in the way of their performance. Like what if we dropped into the body for a second and noticed how that's impacting your shoulders or clenching through the muscles or the grip, right? And so then working with the body to release the tension in the shoulders and to adjust the, the, the tension in the grip, right? So it's stuff like that. And I think we can learn those techniques and gain more awareness around our mind-body connection through movement-based practices. And so I call it an integration practice because we're really integrating the mind and the body through movement. Um, we do it in other ways too. I mean, breath work and grounding and all that stuff. But that's why you see yoga pictures. <laughs> Fair enough. I, obviously. Right. I'm always telling you in good faith, take, just go with me. And you did. Um, yep. 
because clients, everyone listening is going to be resistant to everything. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Everyone has this PDA pathological kind of demand avoidance when they're told yeah. something's healthy, like, oh, I ain't going to do that shit. Or, oh, that's not going to work. Or, uh, you know, I already tried it. And it did. Well, okay. Just calm down for a fucking second. This isn't, this, you know, this isn't voodoo, right? This isn't magic, but I need you to kind of go with it and let's actually try this and it'll work. Yeah. And yeah. all my athletes are like, holy shit. I remember working with my women's hockey team and uh, we're doing the meditations because I'm really, 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 for some reason, I'm gifted at these meditations. I bet you are. You got a nice, smooth voice. Uh, when I actually want, you know, no. <laughs> I knew it's yeah, no. <laughs> What's on the voice? Think about the cookie. Um, but when I actually go into like therapist mode and like, all right, we're doing like trauma work now or like calming regulation voice changes. And I remember I telling the girls like, Hey, I'm going to do this meditation, but it's also like uh, what they call it, a little hypnosis in it too. So I'm going to get their legs to kind of go numb, paralyzed. And one of the girls opened up her eyes and was like, and I was like, Oh my God, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and when we came back to, I said, girl, what was that? She said, I was literally terrified because my legs were like done. I was like, okay. I thought she was like, this shit isn't working. She's like, no, I'm stuck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and I remember being taught all these, these grounding and meditative things that are only like five minutes, not very long. I'm talking three, five okay. minutes. Uh, shout out to my pops uh, who listens to every pod. And he was, he was telling Spencer and me the other day, he said, you know, I listened to your invincible podcast about breathing and all this stuff. And there's all this self-hatred, but we did a meditation, very quick one, like a two minute meditation. And he was like, damn, man, I was freaking out before that. Cause some other stuff was on my mind. And he's like, I was good. Yeah. So he wants me and him to start doing more meditation things at the end of a podcast. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe, but we're meditation te- time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Check out the full episode on our channel and anywhere you find podcasts. Also, remember to like and subscribe. Whoop, whoop.